Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial. And in this one we're going to be looking at building one of these, which is of course an odometer. The idea for this one actually came to me from Cedric, who is another of my subscribers on YouTube. So a big shout out goes to you, Cedric, for this idea. And this is going to be predominantly Expresso. There's just a few lines of Python code as well, which feature. But it's, as I say, a predominantly Expresso tutorial. But anyway, that's what we're going to be about in this one. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. The first thing I'm going to do is bring in the cylinder. I'll orientate it plus Z. Its radius needs to be 10 centimeters and its height five. Its height segments, we, we can do just a single height segment and rotation segments, 10. Hit O just to get a little bit closer to the object. Just zoom out. Next thing to do is actually make it editable and then holding down the option key, select subdivision surface. And we can rename this, but we actually I'll, I'll leave that for now. I'll do the renaming a little bit later and you'll see why. Next thing to do then will be to duplicate. But what I want to do first is just tighten things up a little bit here. So UL, select this loop, hold down shift and select this loop and then holding down the period key or full stop key, click and drag just to make things that bit rounder and, and a little bit straighter around the edges. OK, so that's all looking good and that's fine. So we can now think about the duplication. So in our tools, come down to duplicate. It's actually set up so three copies, linear mode and just 10 centimetres in the Z and the X and Y can be at zero. Hit apply and we've got our copies. We can then drop our first subdivision surface into here and I'm going to rename this drums and gears. And you'll see why a little bit later because I will be putting the gears in here too. So where are we? Let's see where we are. If we select our move tool here we can see what we've got in here. So this first one actually needs to be placed at the bottom of the pile. The second one just above it and this one just above that. So now we've got the correct order. We can now say D1, D2, D3 and D4. And now they're in the correct order that I want them to run in because this will be our first digit. OK, that's fine. So everything is looking good. We just need to place these three back in the drums and gears. Great, so they're all in there and they're ready to go. Moving on from here, we need to create a star gear and also a worm gear on a drive shaft to actually make the whole thing work. So that will be our next port of call. We need a star then. Let's bring one of those in. Where are we? Oh, we've got our star. It needs to be six in the radius, or rather the inner radius, seven in the outer radius, and we simply need 36 points. We can then bring it over here to somewhere about, let's have a look at the coordinates. If we say 35, that should be fine. Yeah, that'll work OK for us. And then we need to hold down the option key and drop it into an extrude. It's way too big. It just wants to be one centimetre in the offset. In the caps, we can put 0.1 in the size. I think that'll be fine for what we're doing here. So that's our star gear created. The next thing we can worry about is going to be the worm gear and the drive shaft. We'll bring in the drive shaft, which is just another cylinder. It will be 0.8 in the radius. Its height will be 10. One height segment and we'll leave it with 16 rotation segments. It will be plus X in the orientation and in its coordinates, we can make it 
35.5 and that will place it in the middle of our gear there and we can just bring this back here by eye for now just leave it where it is we can probably do something in the caps we can probably put a fillet on it but it'll only be a tiny fillet we'll say 0.1 great so that's our drive shaft sorted out for the worm gear we start by bringing in an end side this needs to be 0.8 in its radius and it just needs th three sides we're going to use a triangle for this we'll just drag it over here we it doesn't really matter where it goes but we'll drag it over here so that it's somewhere near the right place and then we can worry about bringing in some helixes because we need two of those to actually make the worm gear so we'll bring the first helix in it wants a start radius of one and an end radius of one its end angle needs to be 1440 and its height needs to be 4.5 and it needs to be in the ZY orientation in the plane there we can drag this over and we can see that we've got that set up so what we'll do is drop this helix into our cylinder and in the coordinates we can zero it out in the X and Y and also the Z so now it's perfectly aligned and we can just drag it to where we want it we need to make a copy of this so we'll command drag so that we've got a copy there drop this down here and then what we can do is select all of these command option and drop them into a sweep and now we're on our way to creating the actual worm gear so if we go into our object we'll just see what we've got here well, we can see that it's not quite set up perfectly yet so we've got a little bit more work to do in order to get that to actually behave the way we want it to so we'll select our object tab here we need to take away these two and we also need to take away the use rail scale and that's got us somewhere closer if we switch our view to our front view and hit H so that we can see a little bit more of what we're doing just bring this closer right okay so we can see a little bit more let's just change the display to garage shading lines and isopalms not really where we want to be let's change the camera to our back view and hit H again now we're seeing what we want to see okay so we can see that it's not quite where we need it to be can't we if we go into the details here we've got our rotation and we can have a play around with this so if we just move a little bit upwards there we got that straighter let's see what we can do here just move this up to somewhere near the center there we go something like that and I think that's quite close I think probably about there that will do I think that that will work for us and that will give us a suitable worm gear we can also have a little play around with the end side if we think it's slightly too big we could make it 0.7 see what that does perhaps not I don't think that's quite where I want it to be I think we'll leave it as it is let's just go back into our 3d view yeah I mean you know that it actually looks quite acceptable to me let's see what we've got with regard to the helixes if we can do something with their heights if we say 4.55 just to make them slightly bigger we could even go a little bit bigger than that maybe I don't know let's just get a hold of the sweep and we'll bring this back so that it's somewhere near the middle of our teeth of our star gear here and we'll change back to that front view and take a look at where it is so let's see in fact what I'll do is group this into the cylinder because it does need to be anyway and then we can move this into position so that it's somewhere where we think it needs to be let's just go up a little bit higher well it's not far off there's a you know we might need to do a little bit of work I think what we perhaps need to do more than anything is just about if we get this somewhere there you can see it's a little bit off isn't it so if we play around with our helixes let's see if we can change this if we can change that to say 4.4 .4 maybe just to tighten it a little bit that might be better yeah and I don't think that's too far off we'll probably 
probably just about get away with it. In fact, it probably needs to go a little bit more. If we say 4.5 again, I think, yeah, you know, 4.5. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's right because we've got a bit of clearance here. We've got a bit of clearance there. I mean, it doesn't have to be absolutely pinpoint, but as long as it's near enough, and I would say that's pretty good, you can see that it's going to work. So I would say we'll leave that like that. And in our... 3D view, it all looks pretty good to me. It all looks fine and dandy. Yeah, I would say we can go with that. That's going to work. OK, so we've got our worm gear and our drive shaft all sorted out and they're all looking very nice. Moving on from here, then we can think about making the actual gears that go between here. And also we've got to make some teeth that will be placed upon our edges here, around our edges here. So that will be our next port of call. I think we'll start with the teeth. So we'll bring in a circle. This is going to act as a guide. We'll make it eight in the radius and we can just drag it to somewhere here. We now need another cylinder. So we'll bring in one of those and orientate it plus Z again. And it will be 0.5 in the radius, just two in the height. We'll give it two height segments and leave the rotation segments as 16. And that's as much as I'm going to do. So we can just bring this somewhere over here and we can see what we've got. Let's just change the display to wireframe so that we can see this height segment because that's going to be useful to us. Moving on from here, we need to duplicate this cylinder around this circle. So we'll select our duplicate tool once again. We need 19 copies this time. It needs to be a long spline and the spline needs to be circle. And we can hit apply and we've got them. Excellent. So we've got that sorted out and we can see that we're almost touching with our height segment here, the face of this. And that's what we need to do. So we're just going to put this in here, grab a hold of these and move them just slightly by eye until that just about touches and that's fine that's where they need to be so that we've got our first set of cylinders we actually don't need 20 around this particular face we only need two but we'll sort that out in a minute and what we're going to call these is drivers and driven so we've got our circle we don't really need it anymore because we're just going to be copying these so these are going to go in our first drum here so they're going to be part of d1 so if we bring these down to just above there for the moment because obviously we've got to do some copying so we'll copy these just click and drag to copy with the command key selected and then we'll call these drivers drivers and we'll call these driven. That's OK, we'll put those in that order. So these driven, what we're going to do is move them by eye until they line up with that face. So until we get that segment just lined up there, that's perfect. So these driven will be going into D2. So we need to dro drop those under this cylinder and just leave them at that level. That way they're not affected by the subdivision surface. Now drivers here, they need to be dropped for the moment in here because they're going to be part of this. And now we can worry about taking these extra cylinders away so that we're just left with two. Now let's see where we are. So which ones do we need? We've got 13 there. Let's have a look. I'm Right, so it looks as if they're starting from, where are they starting from? Okay, one, two, right, I, I can see where we're going. So let's have a look, do we, so we've got 12 there and 13 there. Right, I think what we're going to need are 12 and 13. I'm just going to switch to my front view camera. In fact, I'll change my camera back to the front view. And hit H and let's see where we are with our 
wireframe and where are we need to be no that's not doing it we don't want that we want lines that's it yeah so i think we're going to be in just about the right place i think we can just keep 12 and 13 that should be fine so we'll keep those two and we'll lose the others so let's take away those select that one and shift select there and take away those and also take away those right so we've got just two left now don't want you if we go switch back to our 3d view yeah we just got those two left so that looks good to me that looks as if that's going to work out okay the next thing we can worry about is sorting out some more drivers and driven gears for our other drums so we'll want to copy these so I'll command drag to copy them and move them just over here and again line them up with the face somewhere around there that looks as if that's going to be okay and these second drivers here can be placed under the driven in D2 so we'll just take that one away so we've got driven on the the, the opposite side and the drivers on there so that's fine so those are both set up moving on from here we can copy both of these and drag them underneath so command drag drag them under this cylinder here and then again we can move them into place so if we just line those up about there that'll be fine so they're set up and ready to go and then finally we just need one more set of driven and we need to command drag these under this cylinder in d4 so that's fine there and then all we've got to do is drag those into place just about there and now they're set up and we've got everything ready to go so that's all done and we can move on from here and build the gears that go in between each of the drums let's bring in a cog wheel and start taking a look at this it will be an involute we want eight teeth 3.5 4.375 and 3.5 should be okay let's have a quick look we'll make sure the inlay is correct this just needs to be one centimeter and we can just bring this over here and just see what we've got just change our view go into our front view and take a look at what we've got we need to well we need to do some more work because it's not 100 percent correct so let's just place this here let's have a look see where we are let's go into our teeth this might need to be three actually yeah three is better isn't it so that needs to be three and then we can think about where we're going to place this cog now on the x-axis it wants to be about 1.9 so it wants to be around there let's just see where we are in our 3d view just have a quick look see if this is going to line up okay so where are we if we bring this over to here just see what we've got yeah i mean that looks good there that looks very good there yeah i mean i think so it might look as if it's going to be okay what we need to do i think is just put it into our extrude no we don't want it in one of those we want it in an extrude so select the cog wheel hold down our option key and put it into an extrude way too big wants to be something like let's have a look see where we are probably about 4.5 yeah 4.5 should do i think may even be a little bit big although let's just see if we drag that back no i think 4.5 that's okay if anything i mean i think what we could do looking at it we might need in fact yeah i think what we should have done perhaps was use a different set of or you know just just perhaps used th this particular tooth here that's okay though that's really easy to solve all we've got to do is go into our drivers if we select drivers 
drivers command select that one and command select that one all we've got to do is rotate those by a small amount and we can get that correct so let's have a look see where we are um, just zoom out a little bit in fact go into our front view let's see what we can do let's turn that off so we'll get rid of the drive shaft here we'll just make that invisible for now right okay so we're going to be rotating these so let's see where we are we just need to do this by eye until they line up there just a little bit further yeah i mean i'll i'll refine this i've just got to check where they are if i can select them see what their coordinates are minus 17 if we make that minus 18 it should be perfect let's have a look minus 18 and minus 18 yeah that's perfect so minus 18 is where they need to be and that's set that up exactly as it needs to be great so that's all looking fine what we can also do with the extrude here in the caps we can just give that a small rounding give it say 0.2 that should be okay yeah i mean it's a little bit close what i'll do in the extrude where i've got the object is make that 4.2 so it's a little bit further away and then we can simply move it into place just like that by eye it doesn't have to be perfect on the z it, as long as it's almost right it's fine if we just hit f3 and then h so that we can see exactly where we are yeah we can just move that back a little bit until it's just about in the center between the two with a little bit of gap either side that's fine so we can call this g1 because it's gear one and then we can think about copying so command drag to copy once and then command drag to copy twice g2 and call this one g3 and then we can think about moving these into place so g2 again i'm going to just do this by eye drag it between the two of these and just drop it about there and then finally g3 drag that into there just about there that will do fine if we switch back to our front view or rather our 3d view so f1 we can see exactly what we've got don't really need that f1 get me back to 3d view okay great so we've got everything now set up and ready to go in terms of the build the only thing we need to do is drag our gears into their rightful places so gear one will be between the two of these and that is set up correctly i mean it doesn't it doesn't really matter that much we're not going to be using lists or anything in here so that's okay but i like to set that up because it looks well it's tidy isn't it it's it's the way it should be okay and we can bring back a cylinder and rename it for a start we'll call this drive shaft this is worm gear And what else have we got this oh, it is star gear so we'll call that star gear that's fine and we can drop the star gear in there too so that we've got all the gears in the right place the shaft will leave outside of it but um, that's fine okay so that completes the build and we're ready to move on and it's espresso all the way from here the first thing we're going to do let's just make the drive shaft visible again the first thing we're going to do is actually make this work so we're going to drive this and we're going to use this to drive this and the star gear will be used to drive our first drum so we'll select our drive shaft and give it an espresso tag we've got the window open and we're ready to start work we'll bring in the drive shaft and this will be rotation p that we'll be interested in here so in our coordinates transform rotation p we'll bring that in i'll work with degrees as i always do because i just prefer to work that way 
So we'll come to the calculate degree. We're converting radians to degrees, which is what we need to do. So we can plumb that into there. And then next, we're going to be needing a range mapper. So again, calculate range mapper. And we can connect the output of the degree node to the input of the range mapper. In here, we can say 0 as our input lower, 360 our input upper. Our output lower can be 0, and our output upper 10. So every time our drive shaft rotates through 360 degrees, we're going to want our star gear to rotate by 10 degrees because it has 36 teeth. So 10 degrees is what we're going to be working with. Moving on from here, then, we can think about bringing in another degree node. So we'll copy, command drag to copy this one, place this here, and we're converting degrees to radians. Then all we need to do is bring in our star gear, and this will be rotation. Let's just check. It will be rotation B. That's what we're going to be interested in here. So coordinates, transform, rotation, rotation B. We've got that there. And at the output stage, we'll give this again a transform rotation, rotation B port. Just double click on that to make it bigger. And then all we need to do is bring in D1. And again, if we click on D1, we can see that we're going to be working with rotation B once again. So we can say transform rotation, rotation B. And that completes, oops, hit H, we can see what we're doing. That completes our first Espresso expression. So quite a simple one, this one. Let's just see how this is working. So we'll close this window down, actually. Select our drive shaft, our rotate tool, and let's see what happens when we move this. Straight away, we can see that we're getting the result that we want. If we just change the view so that we can see that more clearly, we'll see what the worm gear is doing. And we can see that that's working well, pretty perfectly, isn't it? Doing exactly what we need it to do. Fantastic. So that's our first piece of Espresso worked out. And that's all working exactly as we need it to. Moving on from here, then, we can worry about what's going to happen when these two teeth have rotated all the way around to here and are going to be touching the teeth of this gear. So that's what we've got to do next. We've got to make these two teeth move this gear. We'll give D1 an espresso tag. And we'll start taking a look at this. Let's see where we are. So we can bring in D1. And we'll also bring in G1. And we'll give them rotation B ports at the output. So that's those two set up so far. Two degree nodes we'll bring in next. So let's get a hold of those. Oops, cross product, we don't want that. Let's remove that one. Degree, that's the one I want. Bring two of those in and they're ready to go because their functions are radians to degree by default, so that's okay. So we've got it so far. The next thing we need is a modulo. So we'll bring one of those in. So a math, and we'll command drag to copy that too because we will need two modulos. Make these modulos in the function. Now the first one we need to set up. We'll just plumb that into there. We need to give it at the input to port 360. Plumb this one in here, and this one needs to be minus. 360. Oops, it's minus 30, minus 360. 
There we go. So we've got our two modulos set up and we're ready to go to the next stage. Now what we need to do is bring in two compare nodes. So we'll bring in two of those. Just command drag to copy that one. And these are going to be taking their inputs from the modulo. That's what we're interested in there. Our first compare, we can set the function to greater than or equal to, and it will be 324. And our bottom compare will be less than or equal to 360. What we're going to be looking at here is the degrees that this has rotated through before it gets to here. So once it's above 324 degrees, that will be the point at which it needs to move this gear. And all the time it's less than 360 degrees, which we've got in our compare here, it needs to continue moving that gear. But once it exceeds that, or rather goes back to zero, because of course we've got a modulo 360, which will take us back to zero once we get above 360 or 359, then you know every, everything sorts itself out from there and we don't move the gear anymore. So that's what we're doing. Moving on from here, we've got to bring in a range mapper, which we will do now. Let's just bring that in. And the range mapper can go about here. We need to drive this range mapper by the modulo. So we'll bring that into there. Just get a hold of these and move them down so we can see more clearly. So that's all ready to go. Now, in the range mapper, we need our input lower at 324, the input upper at 360. We need zero in the output lower and minus 90 in the output upper, because this gear is going to move through minus 90 degrees, because obviously this moves in a positive direction, so this must move in a negative direction. So that's what we're going to be doing there. So every time our drum here has rotated round and is pushing on this, it's going to push when when this is moving between 324 and 360 degrees, this will move between zero and minus 90 degrees. So that's what's going to be happening there. Okay, fantastic. We'll just command drag to copy this modulo and change the function to add. And we'll plumb this in here. So what are we going to be adding to what? Well, in order to find that out, we've got to add a Python node because that's going to be the all important crux of this. So we'll come down to our script menu here and add a Python node. We'll remove the two ports at the input stage. So control to bring up the menu and click to select and delete. And then we can add some new ports. So we'll add two integers and we'll add one float. Our first input we will rename frame. Our second trigger and our third ROT underscore B for rotation B. Our output port we will rename current underscore rot underscore B, so current rotation B. Just make that bigger so that we can see everything. Okay, fantastic. The next thing to do then is to switch to a scripting layout, open this back up and click on our Python node and we can then open this in the editor. The first thing I need to do is import math because there's a couple of functions I want to use from the math module. Down here we can remove this line because we don't need it and we can add to our global variables and we can say rotation. 
Right, moving on from here, the next thing I actually need to do is bring in, I just need to make some space. Let's just move this over here. I'm gonna bring these down into here. I need a time node. I'll just bring that one in. As per usual, I will remove the time port, add a frame port, and the frame will be plumbed into frame there. So we can say in here, if frame is equal to zero, rotation is equal to an empty list. So when we're at the beginning of the animation, we want rotation to be clear. Moving on from here, we can say if trigger is equal to zero, if len rotation is greater than zero, rotation dot append and it will be rote b. Now we're mentioning trigger. So where is the trigger actually going to come from? Well, what we've got to do is add a bool because I didn't do that earlier and I probably should have done, but it doesn't matter, we'll do it now. So add a bool, its function does need to be and, so that's set up okay. We can just place this here and plumb these two into here because we need to test when we're, we're between these two values anyway. That's what we've got to do. Move these out of the way. And then what we'll do next is bring the bool into the trigger because that's going to be the thing that's going to control this. So when we're between these two values, this bool will output a one. That's fine. That's what we're going to need to know. And of course, when we're not between those two values, it will output a zero. So that's what we're dealing with first, the zero condition. And that, that enables us to actually get the value for row B, which we may as well plumb in because that's coming from here. So we'll plumb that into there. So that's going to give us the value that's coming out of this modulo, which will be 0 to minus 90, minus 90 to minus 180, minus 180 to minus 270, and then minus 270 and back to 0 because, of course, it's modulo minus 360. So it's going to repeat time and time again. So that's fine. That's what's going to give us that value. Anyway, let's move on from here and do some more code. So we can then say if trigger is equal to one, we can then say current rot b is equal to, and it will be rotation square bracket zero. So whatever we've stored in our rotation, whatever the, so that will be the current status of this gear, the current rotation status. So it'll either be naught, minus 90, minus 180, etc. Whatever that value is, we're going to pass to this add and we're going to add the value of the range mapper to it to move the gear from one position to the next or one rotation value, I suppose, to the next. So that's the important thing. That's how that's going to work. To finish off the code, we simply need to say else and it will be current rot b is equal to and this is where we use our math module math.floor and it will be brackets rot b and this the math is in there is a fail safe really it just makes sure that we get minus 90 because the modulo might not give us dead on minus 90 so in order to make sure we use a math floor uh, for anybody who doesn't know, the floor works by rounding a number down to the nearest whole value, regardless of what value comes after the floating point. So, for example, if you've got 3.7 and you round that, you're, you're still going to get three with the floor. It doesn't care what that value is, because, of course, with standard rounding, if you're above 3.5, you round up to four. Um, but if, you, if you're below 3.5, you round down. No, the floor doesn't care what comes after. It can be 3.99999 and it will still round down to three. So that's how that works. OK, so that's the, the expression set up so far. The code is complete. We don't need to do any more than that. It's just a few lines of code here uh, and that's all good. So all we need to do now then is just finish things off. 
Right, for starters, I just need another degree node. So I'll command J to copy this one, place this after the add, and its function this time needs to be degree to radians. So we'll plumb that into there. I also need another compare node. In fact, well, let's copy this one. Copy this one over here and its function will be equal to, and in here it will be zero. And we're going to grab a hold of our frames from our time node. So when our frames are equal to zero, that's what we're looking at there. And we just need now a condition node. So we'll bring one of those in, logic condition, place it over here, and we'll switch and leave our input three at zero because we're going to reset things at zero. That's what we're doing here. And then we can plumb the output of our degree into input number two. And then our final node will simply be G1 and it will have a rotation B port. So we want transform rotation, rotation B at the input. And we can plumb the output of our condition into there. And that completes our first expression. So let's just have a quick look at it. There it is. So nothing too complicated going on in here, really. We're just taking D1, comparing it to when it's between 324 and 360 degrees, using that to switch the output of the Boole node from zero to one or vice versa. And taking our time or our frame here into our Python node and when we're at zero, we want our rotation list to be clear. If our trigger is zero, we want to take the current rotation of our gear, which we're getting from here, from the modulo here. So that's coming in to rotation B. And then when our trigger is one, we want to take that current rotation value and output it into this add and then add what's coming out of this range mapper, which is being driven by the actual wheel here. And we want to add that value to the current value of our gear. And that rotates it between its various different states. And then we just output what's coming out of the degree node. And because we're not at zero, this will be switched to our input here and allow this to pass through here and then get passed to the gear. It's pretty straightforward, really. Uh, that's how this is all working. Right, let's just close this down. In fact, well, I'll just, just double select that Python, make sure that's open. I just want to do a double check in the code. Yeah, there's what I, yeah, I, I thought I had. It's one line I've missed here. What we should do, this should be, I should put a line in here saying rotation dot clear. Open, close. So before we actually add the rotation here, we must make sure, as we've said, if it's if the length, the length is greater than zero. So if there's already something in here, we need to grab the next status. We won't be able to if we don't clear the rotation. So we've got to clear it and then we add the current rotation B of our gear into there. So make sure you add that line here. This line has got to be in there. That's how that's meant to look. OK, great. So that completes all of that. And it should now work when we move the drive shaft and rotate this round to here. So that'll be our next port of call, but we'll set that up with the timeline. I'm going to increase my timeline to 23,000 frames, which is a lot of frames. Uh, and in my coordinates for the drive shaft, with our rotation P, we need to, at zero, record at zero. So we'll place it back to, to that point and we can record there. And at 23,000 frames, so we can go through to the end, we want it to be 165882. So 1,658,882 degrees is how much we need to rotate this by. Um, now, the reason we're doing that is because we're going to need to make this move all four of these drums 
and we're allowing enough frames for us to be able to do that. I mean, I'm not going to play this through, obviously, in one go. I'll, I'll use the power of editing to show you that it's all working when we get to that stage. But that's what we need to do so we can record that one there. Don't worry about rotation not being defined. It will be defined. OK. Let's have a look and see what we've got. OK, so let's let's just see if this is actually doing anything. If we come out of our code, just go back to a standard layout. Well, let's, let's just see if this is actually working. I mean, there could be an error somewhere, but we'll just see if this is working. So let's just run this through. We're st what, the one thing we are doing, which I don't want to do, is starting slow. So let's just go into our F curve manager here and see where we are. We've got drive shaft here. Let's just frame all. Yeah, we, we don't want that mode if we just go into linear. That will save us some time there. Right, let's just see what happens. We'll rotate this round. Right, we've got the gear wheel working straight away, which we don't need. So we've got an error in there. Let's just see where we've got our error. Just open this back up and see what's going on. I do actually know that there is an issue with the range mapper. What we've got to do, let me just move this out of the way. We do need to clamp lower and upper. And there's another issue which I'm going to show you. So let's just run this through. So now that's not doing anything. Let's have a look, see what happens when we get there. Well, it does work, but it's not quite working as it needs to. There is an error in it. Let's just see what happens. We'll just run this through and stop it about there. And now let's just go through a frame at a time. Well, it's not too bad, but it's not 100% correct because what we should really do is define this in here. So because we're saying use spline, but we've got nothing to find. Now, all we need to do is add two points and drag them up to the top and bottom corners, respectively. Twirl this down and where we've got 0.25, if we just make that 0.26 and this one minus 0.26, that will give us the result that we need. It just gives that takes away the linear motion and just makes it a, an easy and out curve and it actually works better for it. So let's see what we're getting now. Yeah, that's more the way that that should work. That's that's the way it would work in reality. So it starts off slow, then it builds to a speed and then slows down. And that's exactly what would happen if, if, it, if we were working in the real world. So that's something you need to set up there. But that, that clearly now is working. There's still a bit of an issue with the Python node for some reason. There's something not working correctly in there. But I'm not quite sure what it is. It's saying that things are not defined. Let's have a quick look. Let's just open this in here. And we'll take a quick look at what's going on. Well, there really is nothing wrong with the code. I know for a fact that that's coded correctly. Uh, let's just open the espresso again just move this up here now i've added during the edit a result node in here and let's just run this now now we're not getting any errors in there now and that could be because i've plumbed the result node in let's see what we got now it's minus 90 in there so clearly something has been taken into here or minus 90 has been placed into there because that wouldn't be giving us any result if this code wasn't working so clearly that works. Let's just run it a little bit further. Just do another rotation. Yeah, and we've got 180 in there. So I don't know. Let's just unplumb this and see if we get that error again. Let's go back and play one frame. No, we're not getting it now. How bizarre is that? It's just one of those weird ghosts in the machine situations that sometimes occur. Yeah, I mean, there's no problem now. There's no error in there now. That's really strange and I can do what I like, go forwards and go backwards. I'm not getting any error. Yeah, weird. So all I did there was just plumb that into a result node and check. And if you do get that yellow top, just set that up, play it through a few times and then remove the result node and you should find that everything is OK. It's, it's really odd. I don't understand that. It's just one of those, as I say, ghosts in the machine type things that sometimes happen. But anyway, we can move on from here.
We now have our first gear being driven and this gear of course has got to drive the second drum. So we can do that by simply command dragging to copy this onto here, double click to open it. And then we can make some adjustments in here because it's going to be exactly the same expression, just with a few minor changes. Let's just get this nice and large. So the first thing we need to do is drag in G1 to here, drop that into the, the, the first node. And D2 can be dragged into this node and also this node. So they're the first changes that we need to make. The second will be in the modulos. So our first modulo, we can say minus 300, or rather not 300, minus 90. And our second modulo will be 360 as opposed to minus 360. Our compares we can deal with next. Our top compare will be less than or equal to zero. And our bottom compare greater than or equal to minus 90. Our bool will remain the same. In our Python code, we just need to make one change. So we'll open this one. We simply need to say seal. So as opposed to using the floor, we're going to use the ceiling, which does the direct opposite of what the floor does. So that will round up to the nearest whole number. So if we get 3.1, we get 4. That's all we're going to do there. So the ceiling function is going to be used this time. The add remains the same. The range mapper, we've got to do some work in there. So we've got to say 0 to minus 90 and then 0 to 36. So when our gear is rotating between, well, we'll say 0 and minus 90, so from 0 to minus 90, we want to move this wheel by 36 degrees. So it's got to move in 36 degree increments. That's all we're doing there. Everything else can remain the same, but there's one more change that we need to make in the range mapper. This curve is not going to be correct on this occasion. So what we can do, and we can do this purely by eye, we need to make it into a curve that looks like this. Let's just move that one down a bit. It's that kind of curve that we're looking for. And you can just, as I say, do it by eye. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Just as long as it's not a linear curve, just slightly off linear, that will give you the result that you need. Otherwise, what you'll find is that the gear will actually go through these teeth. It won't actually work completely correctly. But anyway, that's all you need to do to sort that one out. Actually, there is one more thing that I need to correct because, well, if I'll show you what happens, if I just close this down a second, if I select D2, we'll go back to the beginning, just run this through, and we can see D2 has moved. It, it, there's, it's not 100% working at the moment, and the reason there is a reason for it, I'll show you what it is. It sequences through, and then it flicks back to where it was previously. So we've got an issue there. It looks as if it's working, but it isn't quite. So what we've got to do, if we just bring this back, the reason that's happening is because what I did in the compares, I actually set the function to less than or equal to. It should simply be less than, and this one should simply be greater than on this occasion, because otherwise you get the problem that I've just shown you. So let's just run the sequence again and see what happens this time. Yeah, and now it's staying there. And if we run this again, and just let it do another click. And there you go, it's staying where it needs to stay. Yeah, all good. Okay, so that's corrected that one and we set back to zero. Moving on from here then, all we've got to do is copy both of these expressions another two times onto D2, G2, D3, and G3. And of course, we don't need anything on D4 because G3 is taking care of that. OK, so let's start doing that and then we can make the adjustments accordingly. 
We'll do them in sequence so that we don't get confused. We'll copy this one first. So we'll drag that down to there, double click to open it. And let's see what we need in here. So let's move this over so we can see the whole expression. D2 needs to replace D1 and G2 needs to replace G1. And that's as much as we need to do because everything else is set up correctly. So that's one is done. The next thing to do then, we will command drag to copy this one down here, double click to open it, and we've got that there. So G2 can replace G1. And D3 replaces D2. And that's those done. And again, we don't need to do any more. We can then copy this one. So command drag that onto D3, double click to open it and drag in D3 and G3. That gets that one done. And then finally, we just need to command drag this down onto here. Once again, double click to open it and G3 will go in here and D4 will replace D3. And that's it, that completes it. Now you may be thinking, why didn't I use an iteration and link list? Well, I did try and amalgamate them, but what you'd have to do is amalgamate both of these into one and then play around in there. And I did try this, but unfortunately it just created a real mess. So for what it is, this is the best way to go about this, I think. Um, it might be because we've got D1 as a driver and we end up with D4 as something that's driven. It's a bit of a, a bit of a mishmash of different things that we've got going on. So I think it's probably just easier to do this. There may be a way to amalgamate it all and do it with linked lists, but for what it is, I felt this was the easiest way. But anyway, that should all be working now. So we can do a quick check to see if everything's going the way it should be, and then we'll come back and I'll do that by the power of editing. So let's just run the sequence. Once again, we've got our rotation saying things are not right, but we know they are. So that's correct. What we'll do in actual fact, I think the best thing to do, we've got to look at textures. Um, so I think what we'll do first is probably switch to my odometer in here, which is fully textured. And everything is set up exactly the same way. It's just that the only difference is that we do have the textures in. And then we can perhaps have a look at what we've got. Now, for a start, let's switch off the subdivision surfaces on all of these so that we can see what we've got. So we've got a number on each face and obviously we've got 10 numbers, we've got 10 faces. So we've, that's how this is all set up. Now, the important thing is, and I'm not gonna actually show you the texturing because I've done that in another tutorial. I did it in the uh, barrel lock tutorial and I'll put a card up where you can check that tutorial out and see exactly how this was done. The only difference between the two tutorials is that I've got two materials in this one and I only had one in the other. But the technique for creating them is exactly the same. So this is identical to what's going on in there. So please refer to that. So what I've got here, is something that I need to show you. Now, when we get the subdivision surfaces in at first, the type is actually set to Catmull Clark. Now, if I bring that back, you can see I've got distortion, okay? That's what I wanted to show you here. So there's distortion, so you must set it up as open subdivide Catmull Clark, and that gets rid of that distortion problem. So that's all I needed to show you there. And what I've done with, um, let's have a look, where are we? If we open D3 and D4, if I just take away these polygons, just take these away from there, I'd created these two with the uh, the necessary materials. So I'd, these have been created using uh, the UV editor by using layers. You'll see when you check out the barrel lock tutorial. So I only did the two. In order to create the following two, what I did, I simply got a hold of, well, it doesn't really matter which one you use, but just one of these polygons. And all I did was command drag to, to copy that into there. And then all I did was zero it out. And that gives you it, okay? And the same here, just drag that into there, zero it out, and it's in the right place. And then when you switch these back on, everything works perfectly. 
Okay, so this is all set up in here. The animation is all set up exactly the same as it was in my previous file. So when we run this, it will work. And in this file, we're not getting the error in here. And we shouldn't get it in the other one. As I say, have a play around in there and you should get rid of it. It's just an anomaly. Great, so I'll let this run. And then by the power of editing, I'll show you that all of the elements are working correctly. And there you have it. It all works perfectly. And that is how you go about making an odometer with Cinema 4D using Expresso and a little tiny bit of Python. We just go back to it in a standard layout. So yeah, that's all there is to it. it there's a few expressions. I mean, we start with this one here. And this is a pretty simple one, just taking the drive shaft and making it control the star gear. And uh, and yeah, I mean, that's all we're really interested in there. We're just controlling that star gear, uh, fire and worm gear here. So quite a simple expression, that one. Um, but uh, the others are perhaps a little bit more involved because they've got the Python in them. But none of this is particularly complex. There's nothing massively, you know, difficult about what we're doing within these expressions. It's all stuff that you can put together quite easily, really. Um, you know, there's no in-depth mathematics involved. Just a couple of compare nodes here to make sure that we're between a certain set of values when we're turning this gear. And that's that's the most important thing, really, that is just making sure that the gears and, and the other wheels turn at the correct times. That's all it's about. It's just about timing and synchronization. That's all we're looking at here. And we're just working in the Python node to make sure that we get the current rotations and feed them into this addition node and the range mapper or whatever comes out of the range mapper is added to them just to make them rotate at the correct times. That's really all we're doing. It, there's nothing particularly complex about this. And this here is just to make sure that we reset everything when we go back to zero. That's all that is doing. Um, you know, it's it really is quite simple stuff. But it all works perfectly. All works really nicely and gives us a nice result. So, yeah, that about wraps this tutorial up. So, as always, I really hope you've enjoyed this one and that you've got a lot out of it and you can use some of the techniques that we've looked at here within your own projects. And if you have enjoyed the video, then please give it a like. And, of course, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, then please do so. Leave a comment and, of course, ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, then please, please do share this video because all this good stuff really does help keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, for now, that just about brings the curtain down on this one. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.